So the wheels I got on the bike here, this is the new Zip 303S. Um, they are using a brand new rim that's um, new out from Zip. They're disc only, uh, tubeless, and they're using uh, hookless or straight sided tubeless rims. Um, as a wheel set, they weigh 1550 grams. That's split as 718 front and 832 rear. Uh, that's the official weights, although check those myself and they're actually accurate, so it's really good. Um, depth on them, 45 millimeters. And these are replacing the 302 disc brake wheel set that are currently available. And they're gonna be available in uh, XDR, Rode, and Shimano HD free hubs. Um, retail for the UK, 985 pounds for the, for the set. Um, so they're a replacement for the 302, but they're using the same hubs, which are Zip 70, uh, 76 and 176 disc brake, and the same spokes, which is Sapim CX Ray. Um, so what's changing is the rim. Uh, and there's a, quite a few uh, new features within this, uh, within the rim. So comparing these, this new wheel set to the outgoing 302 disc brake, they're about 300 pound cheaper and about 150 grams lighter for the pair. And when you consider that is the only thing that's different is the, the rims. There's quite a bit that's changed within that rim set. Um, these are also now being made in Taiwan, which is the, I think it's the first carbon wheel set that Zip are making outside of the US. Uh, although it is in the SRAM uh, Zip factory out there. It's quite refreshing to have a wheel set that are released that doesn't claim to be the fastest uh, in the wind tunnel. Although Zip do claim um, to, have, to make this wheel set 10 watts faster than the, the outgoing 302. And what they're using is a four, four part system which they're calling total system efficiency. That's made up of gravity, rolling resistance, um, uh, wind resistance and vibrational losses. So gravity is basically a weight, so 150 grams, 155 grams lighter, which is quite a significant saving. Everything else then is essentially coming down to the rim and the, the tubular setup. Uh, there's quite a lot of detail specifically about the rim, so I'm gonna go into to a little bit of detail about that now. So I've just taken the tire off and uh, hopefully be able to give you a better view of the rim and explain what, what's so different about this. So it is hookless. So on a standard rim, you've got what's called a crotchet or a hook. And that was, that's come from 1940s or 50s, designed to keep the, um, the tire on the rim. There's a lot changed and there's a lot more, um, the tighter tolerances on tires. So, and especially with this now, so this is tubeless and it's only designed to be used with a tubeless tire. And that is because of the, the type of um, rim bead and making sure that that stays secure and stays on. So this is a 23 millimeter internal, 27 millimeter external, designed to be used and designed to be fastest with a 28 millimeter tire on the road. The minimum they recommend is 100, 110% of that internal width, which works out roughly as a 25 millimeter tire, so you could use a 25. Maximum, if you want to use these gravel, because they, they're fine, they're designed to use gravel off-road, uh, you can go up to a 55 millimeter tire. So quite a wide, wide range. The big difference, like I say, is the, the tubeless setup and the hookless. And if you check on, see there, maximum rim pressure, just 73 PSI. When these first turned up with me, I gotta say I was skeptical. There, there's a, um, an online chart you can put in the details and check what pressures to run. For me, at about 64 kilos, this was, I'm supposed to be riding these at 53 PSI on the front and 58 on the back. Now I'm, I'm quite used to tubeless, I like the tubeless road, but even for me that's a very low tire pressure and I started off much nearer what they claim as the maximum and uh, started to go down. I've ridden these now for well, over 2,000 kilometers and I'm now running at their recommended 53, 57 and it might seem um, too low, and I can guarantee you a lot of people will think that that's gonna be really slow, but the, the, the science and they've got on these seems to be right. What I will say is because the rim is wide, it pushes the tire out, and I think that helps the tire not to squirm at all. You might think 50 PSI, you're gonna get a really squirm, squirmy tire, but 
in, in practice, not at all, they've been really good. Uh, that pressure then, so uh, say for myself, 65 kilos, 53, 57 front, it's quite low throughout the, the weight range. If you're an 80 kilo rider, they recommend 57 front, 61 back. So still, still much lower than I would imagine that most people are riding. One thing Zip have said is that the pressure guidelines that they're online, it's just a starting point and they liken it to suspension on a mountain bike where you, you start with that and then you can test it and find the pressures that you, you prefer the most. Um, but overall that, that 73 PSI, that's quite low. They said they have tested it at much higher pressures and it's, it is safe and ultimately it's going to be depend on the, on the tyre that you're using. Um, and then for tyres, I've tested these mostly with a Schwalbe 700 by 28 That is a, it's not, it's not the current Suples Schwalbe, it's, it's a previous one. On the rim it blew up to 31 millimetres in diameter, so quite a bit wider than its stated size. Also tested these with a Continental GP5000 tubeless. That went um, up to a slightly higher, I think that was 20, 27 millimeters. And um, also WTB gravel tires, which are stated at 42, and they've gone up to pretty much exactly 42. One big, big plus for these, what I really like is the tubeless tires are really, really easy to put on. Compared to some where you're wrestling to get a tire on the rim or struggling to get the air in, They've gone on easily thanks to quite a deep channel. Here in the middle, it's actually really deep. So the tire sits in there nicely when you put it on the rim. And when you start putting air in, there's, there's you know, you just sort of hold it on. At the most, I've needed one tire lever to put it on and it's gone up with a standard track pump, not even a, not a compressor, not a, a special um, track pump for, for getting tires on. So in use, I've been really impressed with the performance of these overall. Uh, stiffness, lateral stiffness has been really good. And um, comfort as well, but obviously because you're running such low pressures, the comfort is it's going, they're going to be comfortable no matter what tire you're using, I would imagine. But um, yeah, I say I was really skeptical about running such low pressures to start off with. But through, yeah, I say 2000 kilometers of use, they've been, they've been brilliant. The only slight issue that I have with them is the, the rear free hub. It's a little bit slower than some. If you're coming from a six pole uh, free hub down to, to a three pole with, with less teeth, less engagement, you might notice it, but it depends on what, what you've been using before. Another good thing for Zip for 2020, following on from several other brands doing a similar thing, these now have lifetime warranty for the original owner. That includes a lifetime impact and damage they have a replacement policy where if you damage these doing what they uh, are designed for and in, in the case of the 303 it's a variety of road and off-road on gravel then they will replace uh, anything that is broken which is I mean it for what's already a fairly good value set of wheels or comparable to anything else on the market I think that's that's a really good policy and a, and a big plus point. Okay, so to sum up, I think overall they're a really nice fast wheel set. They're obviously they're really comfortable as well. That's because they're, you can run them at such low pressures. But I got over this sort of initial skepticism, and I think if you can get, if you're looking at a nice fast light set of wheels, and especially something that's a little bit different, and you can get over any preconceptions on having a hookless rim, and uh, these are going to be a really good wheel set, and I think probably a sign of the future for for road wheels.